Today we're at Carter Cave State Park in Carter County, Kentucky, my own stomping grounds. We're standing in front of Saltpeter Cave where, where they used to actually, I guess, make gunpowder during the War of 1812. Pretty interesting place. But as we talked to Miss Brooke Slack, who is a wildlife wow. biologist, mm -hmm. There's a little something going on in Kentucky right now where you really have to be careful about going to caves. And in fact, some caves are shut down because of? White nose syndrome. White nose syndrome is the disease, uh, it's a fungus associated with the deaths of what they're estimating now to be over a million plus bats in the Northeast and Eastern United States. We haven't found it in Kentucky yet, but we are preparing uh, for it. Uh, there's no reason to believe that we're not gonna find it as soon as this winter when we start, uh, when the bats start coming into the caves and hibernating. Uh, right now it's found in nine states um, from New York to Virginia and the latest county infected in Virginia is Smythe County, Virginia, which is two counties from eastern Kentucky. Wow. How does it affect the bat physically? Well, what they think is going on with the leading hypothesis is that this fungus invades the uh, tissue layer of the bat uh, while they're in torpor. And torpor is when a bat uh, goes into hibernation and they lower their body temperature and they, uh, they stop their immune response um, so that they can conserve that through the winter. I and mean, this allows the fungus to grow and colonize the skin. It's very irritating, think of athlete's foot. Um, they wake up, they're irritated, they groom themselves, they get rid of it, they go back in a torpor, it grows again, and so on. Basically, they're burning through their fat early and um, leaving uh, the cave in search of food in the middle of winter and uh, dying on the landscape or at the cave entrance wow. of starvation. Now, a lot of people might say, well, it's just a little bat. You know, who cares about mm -hmm, you know, the bat mm -hmm. population? What role do they play in our e ecosystem? Why are they important? Well, in the United States, we have all insectivores. And uh, obviously, insectivores eat insects. And a lot of people um, don't like mosquitoes. Uh, mosquitoes do compose a portion of a bat's diet. A typical bat can eat uh, approximately three times its weight in insects a night. Wow. So you know, let's talk about, uh, for example, a big brown bat weighs between 15 and 20 grams. That doesn't seem like a lot, but you think 45 to 60 grams of insects in a night gone. That's, that's thousands of insects. Yeah, that's wow. a significant amount of insects. Does anybody have any idea how this whole thing started? Well, the, there's a ton of research uh, being conducted right now. There's hypothesis that uh, there's a fungus in Europe that's very similar to white nose syndrome. We're starting to put pieces of the puzzle together and they're, you know, they're working on identifying that fungus. So people can still actually come and go through the caves. The caves that have bats in them, like for example here at Carter Caves, um, there are three caves that have bats uh, that hibernate in the winter. They are closed, um, but uh, the two caves that typically don't have bats in them, X and Cascade, are still open for tours. Um, Carter Caves is doing a good job. They have a white nose talk, I think, every day where they try to educate the public on what white nose syndrome is. Um, and that's really our biggest uh, thing is trying to educate the public, let them know what it is. And, um, you know, just that to be cautious and think about where they've been because we are, we can be vectors of a lot of things that we have no idea that we're carrying. Publicly owned caves in the state of Kentucky, we're working right now, if they are bat caves and they're non-commercial, uh, we're working to temporarily close them just to buy some more time until we can figure out what's really going on with this disease, if humans indeed can transmit it. Um, it's important to note that all federally owned caves, like uh, Forest Service caves, particularly the Daniel Boone in Kentucky, Daniel Boone National Forest, all their clay caves are closed, um, and any other federally owned caves, uh, except for commercial caves, are, are closed uh, for recreational commercial or recreational caving. And just in case, because I know we'll get the question, mm -hmm. people cannot get the white nose syndrome right, themselves. Right, right, right. Uh, we don't see it in any other species except right. bats, and I think that's because uh, the bats are so small and they suppress their immune system during the right. winter. Well, you know what? A lot of people think fish and wildlife just has to do with, with, with the species of game that we hunt or fish for. Right. It's a good thing to know that uh, their dollars are also going towards you guys who are watching out for the big picture because one thing goes wrong in our ecosystem, it affects everything. Exactly. And that really was a cause for concern. My, my initial thought and a lot of other biologists in other states was, okay, so it, even though we're only seeing on the bats, raccoons eat bats. And mm. then raccoons go in and out of the cave and mm. they could go into the forest floor and they could be carrying it to other species. And you know, what kind of impacts could this have on white-tailed deer populations, et cetera, et cetera. So far we haven't seen any of that. Um, 
you know, and we haven't seen any um, adverse effects of humans going in, but we take as many cautions as we can. So far, we haven't really seen it outside of uh, on uh, bats. Well, people think, uh, uh, for instance, down here at Carter Caves, you see all these hemlock trees. Mm -hmm. We recently did a story on the woolly adelgid, yep. I believe you call it. Yep. And adelgid. this little thing's killing these trees. Right. And you find out from the biologists that this will affect our streams, they'll yep. affect everything. So we got to keep our eye on each and everything like this because one little, one little item, yep. one little missing piece causes huge ripple effects throughout our ecosystem. Exactly. Thanks for being on top of it. No problem.